All right, how's it going, everyone? I am CJ9899, and welcome to a new series on panel programming. Okay, so for this series, this is gonna focus on different panels that I own, and I'm gonna go into a bit of the ins and outs on how you program them. And I figured for uh, my first panel that I do, I've decided to go with the Edwards ESA 2000 because I feel like it is a, a panel that lots of people should know how these things are programmed because they are considered by some to be one of the worst panels ever made, really. Um, I can see why some people say that. They're very confusing. The buttons are kind of all over the place. It's one of Edwards... Uh, First addressable panels, I think the IRC3 was before that, or even the 8500 had an addressable option. And uh, no way am I bashing Edwards or anything like that. I love their stuff. And to me personally, I actually really like these panels. They're pretty cool. They got a lot of features for their age. But um, I can understand why a lot of techs and stuff don't like them, because they do have their, their problems. But uh, anyways, for this uh, series, we're going to do a couple parts, and I'm going to go over for each video... A bunch of different features of the programming menu programming for these panels and for those who are unaware there is software you can get for these panels but that software is from circa 1992 or 1993 so it uses DOS it's very old you can't really get it anywhere unless you were to get one of these things new and apparently these uh, the software actually came on uh, discs uh, that you put in your computer but uh, I don't need the software because you can do a lot of stuff from the front panel. You can pretty much do everything you need for collectors, for a collectors or uh, enthusiast system. The software is if you want to, say, rearrange the order of these control buttons or add uh, special like uh, logic equations and stuff like that. But I'm not going to go into that because I don't even have the software. But anyways, so for part one here, we are just going to go over some of the zone programming in terms of the zone labels and also how the LEDs are programmed in part two. So anyways, so right now the system is normal. There's the time and date for those who have never seen. And also I will say again, I bet a lot of people out there have never even heard or seen one of these panels before, but uh, I'm gonna go into it. And now just a disclaimer, I will not be going into this. I will not be going into the walk test because that is something that is very rarely used on these panels. And you're better off to read the manual f for these panels if you want that because even I have a pro uh, tough time explaining it in a video, so it's best to just read the manual and go over it step by step. It tells you exactly how to do it. But yeah, that's that's for that. I'm not gonna go into that. So anyways, so how you get into programming on these panels is first you start by hitting menu. And that brings up your first um, menu branch and there are reports, enable, disable, set time and date, set password, programming mode and exit which i don't know why they put that there because you can just press cancel but anyways we want programming mode which is number five so we you can either hit number five or you can hit enter so we're gonna hit enter then it's gonna come up uh, reprogramming effects system operations you know it requires trained authorized personnel you know these panels are so old that that doesn't really uh, apply much anymore at least to enthusiasts this could also help some techs you know if they're something that needs to be reprogrammed on a system. So we're gonna enter again. And that prompts the uh, to us to punch in the passcode. And now the default passcodes for this thing is very weird. And I'm not gonna say what it is just because just a fear if maybe that is something that needs to be kept secret. But I've changed the passcode and for mine, and I don't really care, no one's, I don't know what would happen, but it's four, 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 four. So just like a quick start. Um, level four the EST three. So I just changed it to that because that's the most familiar. So then we're gonna hit enter And now that's gonna give us a trouble So these panels are it's a lot like simplex's service mode trouble where after you do all your level four programming You need to reboot the panel to get that trouble to clear that trouble will stay until the, the It's the boot fault is gone or the uh, or it warm starts I should say but anyways, so now we are in the programming menus. And now for this list, we have device circuit programming, add LED assignments, delete LED assignments, add correlations, delete correlations, feature selection. So first we are, for this video, we are going to go into device and circuit programming. So we are going to hit enter. 
Now there's auto configure IO bus. Now I'm not gonna do that just because I already have the system programmed how I want, but there is still a few more things I can show that I still need to do to this system. But basically what auto configure IO bus does is it basically auto configures the entire um, system. So basically the main motherboard on this panel has eight zones and two NACs by default, but there are cards that you can get which are much like 66, 32, and 16 cards. Um, where you can add more zones, add relays, you can get ones for audio amplifiers, um, stuff like that, knacks, whatever. And basically the easiest way to add that stuff in, if you use it, is to just do auto configure IO bus when you're first installing the system. Or if it's like a programming loss, you can just do that. So we're going to hit next because we don't want that. Um, add devices and removing devices. Uh, we don't need that either because what that basically is, is for uh, the addressable side of this panel, that these panels can either be conventional, addressable, or both, depending on what you have. But um, this, uh, you can also add addressable devices through this. You don't need the software. But the addressability of these panels is not very reliable from what I've heard. So I don't have an addressable loop controller card for this, and I don't really need one because it doesn't use a Sega protocol. It uses a very older edwards addressable protocols that uh are hard to, you're hard to find devices for i only have like a smoke detector that would probably work with it but anyways add and add and remove devices we'll skip but i mean if you wanted to you just go in and then you'd add the address of the device and it'll automatically put it in modifying the zoning that is just for um your zones so that just basically also is for led correlations which we will also go into in another part uh, modify messages. Now this is what we want. So modifying messages. Now what this will do is basically edit what you want your zone to be called in the screen. So we're going to enter for that. Now it's going to give you the enter loop and module address. So let's try zone four so, or five actually. So basically now how this is going to work is you have your enter loop slash module address. And now how this works for these panels, if you're just dealing with the main motherboard, Loop or address number one is going to be zones one to four and address two will be zones five to eight. And now one to four, as you can see, I've already programmed. That's good. But five to eight, I want to change the labels to just say zones five, five, six, seven and eight because I have not fully wiped the labels on here. So there'll be still some from the original system this place came from. So right now we want address number two. Enter. And now it works as in one, two, three, four again, which translates to five, six, seven, and eight. So now we want one for zone five. So let's try that. And as you can see, that's alarm 15th floor. So whatever that was the 15th floor of the building this panel was originally installed in, but we don't need that anymore. So we can hit enter and we can change that. So there's display type which is going to basically tell us if it's a manual pull station, smoke detector, heat detector, water flow, alarm, uh, could be nothing, it could be a zone, and that is it. So let's just say for now, it is an alarm. So we wanna go to number five. So then you hit enter for that. And now it'll tell you the status which again is alarm. So basically will it, it'll put it in fire alarm or it could be active. So similar to quick starts for the LEDs, you either have alarm or active. What alarm will do is basically give it a fire alarm. What active will do is it'll activate the zone, but it won't be a fire alarm. It'll be like a monitor type thing. I'm not fully sure, but I've also probably guessed that because these LEDs are actually tricolored. I think they're green, orange, or red. So if you get an active um, situation, the LED will actually light up orange. So that would be for, I don't know, like a, a blue pulse station maybe. I'm not fully sure. But for now, we just want alarm. So let's hit enter. And now this is where you change the name. So here's the name. It's 15th floor, and we want to change that. And now basically the keypad just works. You have A, B, C, D, E, F. G, H, I, J, K, and so on. Each button has two letters and you just scroll through the letter you want and then you can hit next or hit a different button and it'll automatically send you to the next uh, column. So right now we want that to just say zone five. So we want Z and then O. So that'll be here. 
O, and then N, and then E, and then next we'll give you a space, and then five. Just go to school. All right, there we go. Zone five. All right, so that is how you program the zone names, and now I'm going to do a jump cut to when they are all complete, so bear with me. Okay, so now if we take a look, I have done every single label. That is now zone six, zone seven, zone eight. So that has been part one of ESA 2000 programming. Next part, we are going to look at configuring the LED enunciation. So stay tuned for that.